would work up just um, kind of how I, my journey, how I arrived at where I am today, the steps I took, and the mistakes I made, and so on. So I put my references on the back page. I would suggest to you, if you did a resume like this, you'd find a way to put it just on the front page. Or not. I can pass these out. Can you do that? Yeah. Well, I, I, see know, I, I know, know your resume. So yeah. You know. <laughs> if at, at any time that I'm talking, you have a question, a comment, please raise your hand, because I don't want this to be me lecturing to you for, for an hour. I'm sure you have some questions about the Braves, I came over here two years ago, <clears throat> just to give you an idea. The general manager is John Cotillo. He's in charge of all baseball operations. Uh, he was my intern in New York. I hired him. Uh, he started at 15,000 a year. He worked 100 hours a week, 52 weeks out of the year. We, uh, we even worked on Christmas Eve again in New York. He was a Notre Dame grad and turned down a hundred thousand a year job to come to work for the Yankees for 15. <clears throat> he did two things. Two things that I suggest to you is find something you like and then work very, very hard. And that's that's his story in a nutshell, what he did. Um, my journey started uh, in California, and I'll probably work from the bottom up, and it doesn't show on here, but I played professionally with the Detroit Tigers, signed out of college, was released, got hurt, was released, came back, finished my uh, degree at Chapman, went on and got my master's, and I started teaching and coaching uh, football, basketball, baseball. In um, 1986, I was a high school teacher, taught at the junior college, Made about 60 grand a year, and that was what 30, 31 years ago. I decided I wanted a career change. I get back to that do something you like. I didn't want to do that anymore. So I got into scouting and I took a job. I was fortunate enough, I knew a gentleman with the Seattle Mariners. I took a job, uh, went into scouting for 25000 a year. People that I talked with thought I was crazy. Within five years, I'd worked hard enough that, as you can see, I'd got to do specific things um, and moved on to the Yankees. <clears throat> and I was fortunate enough to be making six figures five years out of, out of um, teaching and coaching in high school. I um, traveled the globe for the Yankees, signed numerous players then went to work in their front office. And they ran their front office at the time out of Tampa. Strangely as it seems, you'd think it'd be in New York, but it was, it was out of Tampa. Um, never counted my hours, simply because I was probably afraid to, because I probably wasn't making much uh, money in regards to hourly wage, because we were working well over 100 hours. I then went, uh, <clears throat> I went, took a position where I oversaw all of player development and scouting. And we're fortunate enough during a period of time where we won a World Series in 96, uh, 98, 99, 2000, and then again in 2009. I came over uh, to the Braves, I'm skipping up this resume. I came over to the Braves to help the guy who was my intern become uh, successful. I oversaw all of the um, Braves uh, departments overseas. I help with the major league team now. I help with trades. I help with our farm system evaluating <coughs> kids when they'll move to the next level or what off-season programs they'll do. So I'm, I'm 
probably got my dream job. I get to do a variety of things. It never gets boring. Um, I work out of my home, so I don't have to maintain an office in the, in the stadium. <coughs> So getting back to the, the point that I was talking about earlier is it's really important, especially you young people, uh, <coughs> that you really take a look and, and go to all these job fairs that I just heard, I think it was Dr. Anderson, was that mm -hmm. talk about, go to these things, um, see what jobs are out there. There's, there's tons of thousands of jobs in the field. And research those things, talk to people, um, and see what you'd like to do because you're going to work the next 40 years of your life, and you certainly want to do something that, that you like, like doing. How many of you have been through a interview process? Show of hands. Is that like interview for a job? Yes? <coughs> How many have taken classes on how to interview? Anybody? I don't know if they offer them here. Well, they, they will take pre-internship, yeah, you'll spend about a month. Just uh, they, they do mock interviews. It's actually part of, their, part of the class, a big right. part of the class. It's really important to pay attention to it. Unfortunately, people get hired a lot based on the interview. Not, not always is the best person the best person. <laughs> I've hired several people in the baseball field that they weren't very good at interviewing. Um, but they had one thing that I knew they had, they, they had work ethic. And I personally would take that over somebody who interviews the best. But going forward, make sure that you cover that because most people will hire based on your interview. We just got done hiring a guy who's going to be our coordinator of our English program for the Latin kids. And his interview was, was like, yeah, it was like, oh, I felt so bad for him, he was nervous. Um, he speaks Spanish, his English is a little limited. He had to do the interview in English. He really struggled, and when we got done, my boss and John Sherholz's son, who's our farm director, said, we can't hire him. I said, no, we're gonna hire him. Because I know him, he's worked for us on a part-time basis piece of work. Let's not worry about the interview thing. We hired him. He hit the ground running. By the way, they said, outstanding. One, because he's a work. One of the great things about doing the interview classes or whatever, they kind of teach you, I'm sure, how to uh, research who you're going to be talking to. That's important. Um, I used to, prior to taking classes and interviews, <coughs> I used to prepare myself with what kind of questions they would ask. But when I actually paid a guy to help me interview, he taught me how to sit, who to talk to, um, make sure my nails were done properly, um, how to dress. There's, um, not everybody wants a coat and tie. Um, not everybody's interested if you're clean shaven. Eye contact is really important. So I try to impress upon you people to, to go through that, that interview process um, and do those things. Prepare yourself a, a resume. Um, I'm sure there's, there's classes for that too, I guess. Yeah. Um, and go through that, go through that process. Another thing too, um, when I was 32, I decided career change. Don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to take chances. Don't be afraid to work for less money. Money is important. That's obvious if you want. If you're gonna work, you might as well make as much as you can, but make sure you're doing something that you like. Let me talk a little bit about the Braves. Braves fans, anybody? No? Because we've been lousy the last two years? <laughs> let, me tell, let me tell you what we're doing with the Braves and what's transpired in the last two years. <clears throat> we 
when this new general, general manager came on board, John Hart came in, myself, we realized that we could not win the division uh, constituted with the team we had. We weren't going to beat Washington. So we decided that we were going to have to trade some people off. We tried to sign Jason Hayward to a long-term contract. The money that he wanted wasn't what we wanted to pay long-term. So we made a move and we traded a very popular player, very good guy in the clubhouse, good guy in the community. We traded him. Um, we got prospects back. We got a pitcher back who we then shipped off to Arizona and we now have our starting shortstop, Dansby Swanson. Anybody heard of him? He's now, that's, that's part of the whole Hayward deal is him. Um, and in Ciarte, people know who he is, our center fielder. That's partly what we did. It wasn't that we didn't like Jason Hayward, but we could get more bang for our buck. And both players are cost effective. They're both making minimum wage in the big leagues, which is, I think, 510000 a year. Whereas Jason Henry, uh, Hayward is making close to $20 million, so you see the difference. Um, we then had two contracts that we thought were really bad in um, DJ Upton and uh, Uglo. Uglo was had an eye issue. And to move them and release ourselves from those contracts, we had to package good players to do it. So Kimball left. I know that was very unpopular in the city when he left. So we packaged him together. And what it did for this year, it eliminated <coughs> those contracts, otherwise we'd have still been paying for those guys. And I want to say their total combined was close to 30 million, maybe 28 million. That allows us this year now, and that money, plus other money that we had saved. So we're now in a position where we can go out now and spend almost $50 million. And with $50 million, we're going to be very competitive. Very I think we're I think we're one year away from, from a chance to get in the playoffs. I think we're two years away from winning the division. But it all came about because we had to move popular players and dumb contracts. So I'm hoping you'll hang with us. Uh, it took the Cubs it took the Cubs five years to do what we think we're going to do in three. They lost 100 games, I think, four years in a row. Thank goodness we didn't we didn't lose 100 games. We come on strong at the end. Um, but we think we're up. We think we're going down the right track. We have a new stadium that'll generate some more money. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful venue. Um, last I heard was 30 restaurants. There's an Omni Hotel that lies above the site. They're really trying to get the regional community back with the Braves. The people in Tennessee, Kentucky, Carolinas, Alabama. Of course, Georgia. Um, I don't know how expensive the tickets will be. I'm sure it'll be, it'll be relatively high, uh, but it'll be a good venue. Is there any, any question? Nobody's raised their hand or tried to interject thought or uh, ask a question on anything on this. I was hoping this would be a, a more of a give and take uh, presentation. How many, how many of you, I, I don't even know the name of the class. What's the name of the class? Practicum. Sorry? Practicum. So this is the first class they, they once they decide that they want to be sport management majors, oh, they okay. take this class, and this class, in a nutshell, the way we've explained to them, it's, it's about career exploration. So oh, they I come in into this major not knowing some of them, you know, how many of you, I'm looking at, I know you want to be a sport agent. Some of you want to be sport agents. Some of you, there are some of you who want to, you know, Coach, be scouts. Uh, I heard who some was, of that. Who wants to be a scout? Really? And, and what's the point? Football. I should have gone with that. Let me tell you how we're structured. And I know the NFL doesn't have as many per team because they basically they don't scout the high schools. Um, the NBA does scout. We have 30, about 30 international scouts, and they're in every country that plays baseball that we scout. So in the Far East, we have someone in Taiwan. We have someone in uh, Korea. We have someone in Japan. We have someone in Australia. Our guy in Australia 
oversees that area for us. Bill <coughs> Dale's been with us a long time. <coughs> Domestically, in the States, we have another 25 scouts. And if you lived in Cal Southern California, you would have the Southern California area. You would have Northern California. You would have the um, Pacific Northwest. We have somebody that does the Four Corners. So you can see they're responsible for any high school, college, community college. And by the way, we scout the community colleges really heavily. Been a lot of good players. Kimberly, Kimberly, <coughs> um, Medlin, the pitcher they got hurt. He was a junior college player. So we have those people that are responsible for those particular areas where they live or close to where they live. We then have four people out of that department that go and put the list together. So on draft day, I think it's the first week in June, they have a list together of, let's say 700 players. And those four scouts are the ones that go about and see all the best players. Um, the King Griffey Juniors, the Derek Juniors, the Alex Rodriguez, is blah, blah, blah. They put those together, they put them in order. And then on draft day, we have a particular order already set up. Uh, then we have professional scouts which has got all the major leagues, all the minor leagues, all the independent leagues, all the foreign pro leagues. The pro league in Mexico, there's a pro league in Japan, there's a pro, pro league in Korea. Um, each major league baseball club has a minimum of six teams. So six times 30 organizations is 180. So roughly 200 uh, teams are already 170 minor league teams, we scout all those. That's all put into the computer. And we have 20 people do that. So you add the 30 to 25, you've got roughly uh, 70 to 80 people that work for the Braves that do nothing, they scout. Um, I couldn't speak to the NFL, but I would say that the NFL probably has less than half of that. <coughs> The NFL, I would love to go to the prom, right? They, they shut it out. I've asked numerous times. I've got John Bruton, who does, uh, does he do Monday night now or Sunday night? I, I lost track. Yeah. The announcer used to be the coach of Tampa Bay. Yeah. I tried to, we were, we're friends, and I tried to get into the combine. The combine is, you're familiar with the combine, I'm sure. And it's very difficult to get in there. Um, that kind of gives you an idea of what each club, the Braves do that. Uh, 29 other clubs do about the same. It's very competitive. Um, discussing players that, that you like or your scouts like with another team is forbidden. You're the best. If you're if you're one of the best players in Georgia, and I and I found you, and I and I'm going to try and sign you. And one of my guys says, "Hey, Gordon found what's your name? Charles. Charles found Charles." That gets out in another team, so if the information is highly confidential, and it went in dealing with the scouting particular realm. Um, as far as development, the NFL, there's a ton of jobs in development in uh, in baseball, coaching, training. Um, we now have uh, nutritionists, um, strength and conditioning. We have several people that help our kids go back to school because baseball has a um, program when you sign, Charles signs, I sign Charles, and we sign him to a bonus and he's going to go play and <clears throat> then we pay for his college. 99% um, of the kids that, that we sign get a college scholarship program, which, is, which was really neat because um, you could play poorly, it's still good. You can play very well, it's still good. You can get hurt, it's still good, we'll pay for it. Whereas, I know a lot of colleges, if you get hurt, or you drop out, you uh, don't do well in school, they need the scholarship. Baseball program set up, entirely different. Uh, and it's run through the commissioner's office. So there's another set of jobs in Major League Baseball. And they have a tendency to have too many jobs. And they pay particularly well in Major League Baseball office in New York. But in regards to the college scholarship program, 
we've hired somebody to monitor that. Monitor that.